right before we jump into this video, don't forget to like, share, and comment on this video because somebody is going to win a free year of Squarespace for absolutely nothing. So enjoy this video. Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com. And in this video, I want to show you how I export photos from Lightroom to be used on my website, as well as resize those same images to be used for prints. Because a lot of people ask me, well, what size do I export for my website? And then other people say, well, if I want to make an enlargement, how do I export that file to make it the right size? So I'm going to show you that in Lightroom right here. So I have 12 images that I want to turn into a gallery on my personal website, jaredpoland.com, which so happens to be a Squarespace site. Now I've got all 12 selected, meaning I hit Command A on the Mac and they're all selected. I go ahead and right click, scroll down to Export, and I hit export. You could also create presets, but I want to just show you the process that I go through the first time. Uh, you can create export location. That could be your desktop, a folder that you chose. I so happen to have a folder that I made called Untitled Export, because that's what I've left it with. File naming, I leave it exactly the same as the file names that I already had. But this is what you should be looking at, file settings. So to export for my website, I have it set as a JPEG. A lot of people go, but Jared, you're the I shoot raw guy. That's correct, I shoot raw. And then when you export your files, you export them as JPEGs to be used on the web. Quality, I personally set it to 80. I pull it down just a little bit because on the web, it doesn't need to be the best of the best of the best with honors. It still needs to be good, but when we get to printing, I'll show you that at 100. Now, as color space, I set to sRGB because that's where I set it. Uh, I don't use any of the, SRG, uh, the, the, the pro sRGBs or whatever that is, pro RGB, because I've had issues with that color space in the past. This is the best that I use for the web as well as when I'm doing printing because pro RGB that I used in the past, it didn't work too well when I was making prints at Adorama Pix. Now, this is pretty cool because you could limit the file size if you wanted. For example, if you wanted the files to be all under one meg, you would type in 1000K right into this spot. You would click this because what if somebody's like, oh, I need the files to be no more than 400K. Well, you would go ahead and type in 400K, you'd hit export and it will keep the file shrunk to 400K. Now the quality may be lost, you may, you know, it may be much smaller, but if that's the size you need to stay on or stay within, then that's what you would go ahead and do. Uh, what is next? We've got image sizing. So I leave it set to the longest edge. You could do width and height, you could do dimensions, short edge, megapixels, percentage. I do the longest edge knowing that I want my longest edge to be 2,500 pixels for web usage. I'm pretty sure that Squarespace recommends 2,000 pixels, but I stepped it up to 2,500 just for future proof and people are using much larger screens these days, so I'm gonna upload them larger. So 2,500 pixels on the longest edge means if you have a horizontal image, it's gonna be 2,500 pixels on this at the longest, not the shorter side. And if you have a vertical image, it's gonna give you 2,500 pixels vertically. So that's what I use. I also leave it at 300 resolution. Some people do 150. That's personal preference, and yeah, this will make the file size a little larger. I just leave it at that. And then I basically I hit export. Now I already have exported these for time purposes, but depending on your computer, it will export at a specific speed. It won't take that long because these files, I'm gonna hit skip this time. Let me show you this. These files are not that large. They're 1.1 megs, they're 1.5, depending on the images, uh, and, and all the way through. So now that I have these images, how do I make a gallery on my Squarespace site? Well, this is super simple. This is the back end of my Squarespace. Over here on the left, well, we can go back to the home. You can see this. This is what you're going to see. I click on Pages. This is my main navigation. So if I was to enter the website, you'll see the navigation down here. You see all the different navigational options that I have? Well, this would be a personal photo story that I want to upload from Pamcakes. So I come to Personal Photo Stories, and I go ahead and I click add page, add a gallery, super simple, type in pancakes, pancakes, and boom. So I click on that, we've got pancakes, and now how do I get the images into this gallery? Here are my images, hear them roar, highlight them, drag them in right here, and what Squarespace is doing is uploading 
as well as resizing. So while that's happening and you can see it in real time, I'm going to turn around and say I personally use Squarespace to build jaredpoland.com. I highly recommend you check it out. Go to squarespace.com slash fro. Use my code fro at checkout to get 10% off your entire order. But better yet, when you first start, you get 14-day trial for nothing. It's a free 14-day trial with no credit card necessary. I've been using this for many years. A lot of fro readers have decided to try it because it's super simple. Look, it's already built the gallery. It's done. I'm going to continue showing you why I think you should use it, but I recommend you check out squarespace.com fro to get your free trial. Now look, it's already created the gallery. This is basically ready to go on the website. It could already be there. It's actually already there. But if you go down here to personal photo stories, it already has pancakes added to the bottom. But I don't like this order. Well, how do I make the change to the order? Oh, I just drag it. Oh, I want this image right here. And then I want uh, this image right here. And so on and so forth. You can move the images to wherever you want. And Squarespace does the rest. What it's doing is it's taking the image, it takes the 2,500 pixels that I sent it, and it's going to shrink them to, I believe, seven different sizes. So depending on if somebody's looking on their phone or if they're looking on a 27-inch iMac, then they're going to serve the certain size quickly. Now let me show you something that I also like about the Squarespace. Now let me show it to you as if it was on the website. Do you see how it just resized? There's a thing called responsive websites. That means as you change the size of the site, it's responsive. The images are responsive. So you see how they're changing? And then if I go like this, this would what it would look like if it was on the phone. So you see how that works? Yep. And then you just scroll this way and it enlarges right there. Simple. You go through the images. They're all here. They look great. That took a matter of seconds. It's not that hard to use. You go back here, you can see the images. Oh, I want to see that image. Or, oh, I want to go into a different portfolio. But you can see it right there on the website. It's so easy to use. That's why I recommend it, because you can build this stuff on your own. It is not very hard. It's not very expensive. And you can get your 14-day free trial at squarespace.com fro. Get that 14-day free trial. If you think it's for you, use the code fro to get 10% off your order. But we go back here. What if I wanted to put it somewhere else? Well, OK, I think it should go into music stories, which it shouldn't. But it just updated on the website, and there it moved pancakes to there. It doesn't get any simpler than that. I know it looks simple, and I know some people say, well, you should hire a web designer to do this for you. No, if I needed to hire a web designer and pay them $150 to put up a new gallery because it takes them an hour, or I have to pay them more because it takes them more time and they have to get to it, I don't need to do that anymore with my website. I can do this myself. I can make a gallery just like I just did, update it like that, and put it out into the world. And that's what I did. So I don't want this on my site right now. What do I do? I could either put it into not linked down here, which means, look, it's no longer on the website. That's hidden. So I can go right here, just showing you the site. I hit Enter Me, and it's gone. No more pancakes anywhere. It's down here. I could save it for later, or I could go ahead and delete it altogether just by hitting Delete confirming that it's gone, and that's it. The site is that quick and that easy to use. So I just showed you how to make a gallery there. Super simple. Let me show you how I export an image in for, for printing. So let's pick this image. I'm going to hit Export. Boom. If you want to share it with a friend, you could always hit Export as a DNG, because the DNG is a digital negative file. It's going to save the image. It's also going to save all of your edits right inside of one file. But what do I do if I want to export for, uh, say, Adorama Pics, and I want to make a 24 by 36 inch print? Well, I will come down to here. I make this back to 100, because I want it to be full, the highest res that I can possibly. Like, I don't want to lose quality at all, because I'm making a print, one print. So I'm not going to do the longest edge right here in pixels, I'm going to do the longest edge in inches. And I'm going to say, well, it's 24 by 36, so I want it to be 36 inches. So I would hit 36, and it will come out at the proper length, 36 inches on the longest edge by however it falls based on the file that you're exporting. It is super simple. Leave the 300 resolution. I would hit export. In this case, I'm going to hit use a unique uh, name. 
It's exporting it right now at 24 by 36. Then I would upload that up to whoever I'm going to, whatever print service I'm using, in this case, Adoramapix, and you would be good to go. So let's see, right here, now it's a 79 megabyte file, but that's not a problem. It did the resizing for me. Ignore this noise and grain. That's just because it's a preview. It's not that bad when you would get it printed, because I've actually had this one printed that large. Then you would upload this to the site, you'd make the print, and that's it. It's really simple to do this. I use the 2500 pixel export. Uh, I'm going to turn over here. I use the 2500 pixel export at 80 quality when I go to Facebook, when I share images with friends, when I email it to people. I generally try not to email it, but when I send them the file, I give them that 2500 pixel file because it's not too small. It's not too big. If somebody wants to make a print from it, they're going to make a four by six. It's not that big of a deal. Most people don't even do that anymore. So this is pretty simple, guys. That's how you export your files to go up onto a Squarespace gallery. I showed you how easy it is to make a Squarespace gallery. That's why I recommend using it and personally use it. And I also showed you how to export a file at any size because you, you do that. You export it at, say, 36 inches. Now, keep in mind, if you're going to make it super duper large, you still need a quality image file to go and make things super duper large. But that's exactly how you do it. So again, if you haven't checked out Squarespace, you don't have a personal website or you do, you're using somebody else. I think Squarespace is the easiest solution to use to build your first website or to build a better website or to have a portfolio online somewhere. Go to squarespace.com fro to get a 14 day free trial. Use the code fro at checkout to get 10% off your first order. So if you sign up for a year, you're going to get 10% off your entire first year. So thank you guys very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share on this video. And that is where I'll leave it. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.